Hey guys, I want to talk a little bit about slide guitar. Um, well, it kind of begins with um, which kind of slide you want to use, how you want to set up your guitar, because all that's pretty important. I've been playing for a lot of years, so um, I can play with pretty low action. But really, ideally, I mean, even if I was going to record something, I would probably just thumb screw my strings up a little bit just to give it a little bit more leeway. That only makes physical sense that if you're pressing down, you don't want to be you don't want to be clanking into the frets, although some guys do. For the intonation, you can hear them actually clanging, really almost like fretting with the slide. Now, I grew up listening to, to Dwayne Allman, so I always like the sound of like electric guitar at high volume with the Pyrex or with the, um, the kind of glass slide. There's so many of them. You know, there's metal ones. I have some big, heavy brass ones that I use sometimes if I'm playing a dobro or a guitar that needs to project a little more sound. But I find this works really beautiful. I have also um, predominantly play on my treble pickup. That picks up all the little harmonics that your fingers use. I mean, I think that's the sound I always seemed, whenever I seem to get closer to the Dwayne sound, Dwayne Allman, um, it was always the, kind of the treble pickup with the uh, with the uh, treble adjusted back so it's like killing you. And um, yeah, I would think the first thing to do is just get comfortable holding one, to getting this slide on and finding one note. I mean, that's actually a good place to start. Um, a lot of guys, the traditional blues guys, a lot of them do a real fast vibrato, vibrato effect like that, which is okay. That was never my ideal. Um, I like the more singing vocal qualities that a slide or pedal steel. And that's a little more, um, uh, and it's a little harder to do, I think, because you have to be more precise with your intonation. Um, but what you can do, check this out. And I've even done this on gigs when my ear wasn't quite up to snuff that night for whatever reason. Um, if you, most guys have a tune, uh, tuner on their, on their pedal board. So just go. I pick up my fingers as well. That's a different sound than if I go. I pick up my fingers, which gives it a softer. And that might be a good habit to get into. Just take one finger, middle finger, whatever you feel like. And I'm kind of, for right now, I'll, I'll do another lesson on muting. But for right now, I'm just kind of like leaning the, my thumb and stuff on the strings. To, you don't want all that stuff going on at a, at, at, when you have distortion um, or at all. But sometimes I'll just go. And I'll actually look at the note uh, on my tuner and see if I'm, if I'm too sharp or flat. And just, you know, kind of crawl around and experiment down the same scales you play without a slide. You know? That I would think be the first step just to get the sound a little under control. So try that for now, it's one note at a time, make it sing. I like to hit it slow, I hit it with no vibrato. Then add a little shake to it, it gives it more of a vocal quality to my ears. Okay, so back to slide guitar. We've already talked about just getting a hang, playing one note, making it sing. But one thing that's really important to get a good sound on slide and make it sound uh, uh, as musical as it can be is a muting technique that most guys use. I just, I've been playing so long since I was a kid, it kind of comes naturally to me. But basically I chose my third finger, probably because Dwayne Allman used that finger, but I found out through the years, it's kind of enabled me to twist. I can turn and get different intervals. On this particular finger, I can do a combination of things. I can fret behind the slide if I want to get that involved. Sometimes I do that just for an effect. Play one note, then go. Three blind mice. And uh, also, it enables me to be able to turn. If I had it on my middle finger, I wouldn't be able to turn as easy to do like a, a minor third interval. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I choose the third. Now, I've never, I don't like to tell students what to do in many respects, because I think if you want it bad enough, you will find it, no matter what your shortcomings or what you think you can't do, there's always a way to do things. So that's what I do to get my sound. Um, now, the muting thing, if this is important. Um, I kind of designate one string for each finger, uh, depending on where I am on the fretboard. And I'm kind of only utilizing four. I don't really do my little finger that much, but um, the thumb is on the lowest string. Then I have my index finger on the D string, middle finger on the G string, and the ring finger on the B string. And instead of holding those little groups like that, or jumping up to the next um, group of four. And what might be a nice exercise for you to do is to play like down in a chord uh, shape. In this case, I'll use G. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, everything's covered for right now. There's nothing, everything's pretty much muted. I'm muting with my thumb over the bottom strings. I have my, I guess my little finger is on the top string, but it's kind of being muted with my ring finger too. But I'm going to pluck the B of the G string while the other strings are being muted. And then I'm going to go hit the G. And when I did that, I dropped my ring finger back on the B string to mute it. So, and then I play the, the high D with my thumb while the other strings are being muted. This is really important if you want to get uh, melodic, because um, you don't really want it, unless you want that effect, you know? So the idea is let's take that for right now, like a G chord. See if you can practice. When you're playing one, the other one's muted. When I play the, the G, I, mute, I drop my thumb back on the D string. When I play that B, Once again, that lick up on the uh, D string on the fifth of the G, everything else is muted. When I hit the high G, I put my thumb on the B. It becomes second nature after a while. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, now that we've got some of the the techniques that are, are are important in playing slide guitar. I'll give you a couple of licks. This is um, kind of a movement that kind of becomes uh, part of my whole vocabulary on playing slide. It's probably from Dwayne Allman or, I don't know, maybe a right cooter or thing. But let's stay in the key of G. And the movement is this. Now we've talked about muting when you're playing one string. You're dropping your fingers on the other strings to mute them because you don't want all that excess noise going on. But the lick is this. It's a... Now that doesn't sound like much, but check it out. If I'm in the key of G, I'm going to slide from above the note down to the C, the four, and then slide up on the G string. This movement was done a lot. It, um, it's really handy just to kind of get um, the involuntary uh, um, motion of going. I used to hear that all the time from guys playing slide guitar. Now you can, like we do in my other videos, I try to expand on all these motifs as much as I can and take them everywhere I can. So why not? So do, we're in the key of G. So actually what I'm kind of doing, I'm kind of going, going a whole step right and taking that note down a whole down to the next scale tone not a whole step sorry Chord, um, scale tones so the idea is it's a fun exercise to do you can do it anywhere Now, when you get, to, you can also do thirds as well, right? Which is try that out. That'll give you some new ideas. Okay. Um, here's another little lick you can use often when playing slide guitar. It comes in really handy. Now, 
I should have prefaced all my other videos by saying I, I play mostly in standard tuning. Um, uh, I've, sometimes I use a guitar in the house that has a, an open tuning in it, and that's kind of fun. But to me, I still see the fretboard best in standard tuning. So, but if you use this technique of like turning the slide sideways, you can get some other nice intervals. For instance, if we're in the key of G, You have to be pretty exact when you're doing that, and I wasn't then, but in the... It's a good thing to experiment with, and you can get away with it on this, on, when this with your slide on your uh, third finger. There's another life like there, right? Third. Something's just led itself really nicely to slide to get a nice emotive feeling. You know, I use it all the time. That's um, those are licks that can fill in some stuff for when you're soloing. You can also do like really ambient things with slide, like it can be really emotive, and instead of having a key pad or something low, that can make for a nice pad underneath whatever else you're playing. So these are just extra little slide licks. Okay, here are some more little slide licks that might make you think a little bit. Now, I love the sound of slide, and I know that traditionally a lot of guys tune them to open tunings, but I've always stuck with standard. But because I know the fretboard pretty well, and because I wear my slide on my third finger, so I have access to some figures behind the slide, I figured out a kind of technique where I can get... Where I can actually get some kind of shredding, some kind of faster stuff happening. And here's the concept. I'm kind of rolling the slide off the strings a little bit. So in this case, we're doing like G blues, right? So it involves... That pentatonic shape in G minor, or it can have the third in there if you want to make it a blues. So what I'm doing is going finding the D and G up here on the 13, 14, 15, 16, 17th fret. So I'm just kind of picking up the slide a little bit, kind of turning it that way a little bit, and playing with my ring finger, I mean with my index finger. Right? It's pretty cool. So my right hand is good. But my slide is going. Little cool extra licks to do slide with. Do this slide. Do slide with? Do with slide. Once again, these are all like just little ideas for me. You don't have to play these exactly like this, but it should give you ideas on how to advance your slide guitar playing. Take the licks that you learned in the last lesson and turn it into a whole exercise going. And of course, always resolve it to a nice chord tone. So. Depending on where you do the other note behind the slide, it could be a little extra physical stretch between. Happy sliding.